the 19th of March, it's 2023, <clears throat> I'm going to be your host, uh, Dana Durnford, hope you're having a great day, I'm also known as the Gamma Goat, you can call me the Nuclear Proctologist at 709-589-4406, ha <laughs> ha we're a minute late, I apologize, so rare to be late when we're doing this for some reason. There is lots of news to get covered. We um, are going to be talking about nuclear. A lot of the topic is focused on Fukushima nuclear meltdowns and its radioactive fallout. Uh, a lot of people, the majority of people are confused. They think just the Pacific Ocean is um, harmed. And it's actually an extinction event from the research expeditions we carried out to Alaska for six years. Uh, this model right here, my finger is pointing, is 19.5 days, 468 hours of radioactive fallout. So it covers the whole planet, not just the Pacific Ocean. They want you to think about what might happen by talking about the fable known as tanks, but you've got to consider what happened. That's what they don't want you to consider, and that's why you won't see many people um, in the algorithms on my shows, because that's what we're going to talk about. We have 11 incredible viewers. After a decade, if you work really hard, you too could have 11 viewers on your live show. I mean, you know you've reached the top when he sent you down to 11. <coughs> um, because these are both the official pictures. The picture on the left is the fake one. And so they built this contraption over the destroyed and missing Reactor 4, for instance, and then claimed that it's perfect. Now, if you look at all four sides of Reactor 4s, and so this is extremely important, otherwise, why did they have media worldwide pretending they're in a building that actually don't exist? That's a question you might want to ask your loved ones. The fact that uh, the uh, reactor in Japan is a uh, hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. So it's a hundred times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. And as you can see, it doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> At the top of the building were these, what's known as the fuel pool, that would be the very roof of it up there. And they have decades of reactor cores stored up there, but there is no up there because it blew up and caught fire and and released all of it on into the planet. So it's minimum of 30 reactor cores, and each one is 100 times more powerful than Chernobyl. So they took uh, reactor 3 and 4, which is very visible reactors, and then pretended that it was perfect and that they were getting fuel out of a pool that doesn't exist. Now this is important you understand this facet of it, because the radioactive fallout is two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. So both of these are official pictures, but only one can be real. And it ain't that one there. The idea is to manipulate you into believing that it existed. And apparently they did done the same thing with Reactor 3. They gutted it with remote control cranes until it was just a stump left, and they pretend Reporters now, no less, pretending they're in the fuel pool at the top of a building that actually don't exist. And so when they write their articles, they've been doing this for 80 years. Generation after generation of journalists stabbing you in the back as quick as they can. Same as your military, the A-10 Warthog only shoots dirty bombs. Only shows Dolram, depleted uranium, low-level radioactive material. So they took these con stumps, put these contraptions on it, and claimed everything was fine. 
Meanwhile, the radioactive fallout, that model in the bottom is uh, 26 days of radioactive fallout. The other one I showed you was 19 days. Uh, tomorrow night we're going to do a show on die-offs and we've had a die-off on the East Coast here yesterday. We'll get to that tomorrow night. I'll just show you a couple of quick pictures of Friday and Saturday. So Friday I went looking for a baby seal to get see if I can find it and get some pictures of it. So I'm just going to show you five pictures of the weekend and then we'll show you the rest tomorrow night, hopefully. Uh, by the way, that's, that's actual pack ice. There's not very much of it, but the wind was blown from the east and pushed it into some of the little bays, but not enough to trap dolphins or seals or sea lions or walruses or porpoises. But there he is. There's the little charmer right there. And some of the pack ice that blown in. It took a while, probably took 20 minutes for him before he finally lifted his head. And I got this picture of him and a few more will show you tomorrow night. Such an amazing planet that we got. Imagine living on ice. Now, he's not safe because the eagles, I got this on Friday, and that's what he's looking for, those baby seals. Now, the ice doesn't extend very far offshore, so the next pictures might be disturbing to some people. These are dead uh, dolphins that washed up. So here they come. Um, these are the white-nosed dolphins. There was 25 that washed up. They washed up alive. And there was no pack ice where they washed up. There was some ice floating around, but there's no pack ice. And so that ice is rolling along the coastline with the tide. And so if it comes in contact... <laughs> my apologies. You think I know better after all these years, but I missed something. So there's no ice where these washed up. Now, the week before, we also went down for sh another stranding. The week before, we went down for another stranding. And uh, we caught the Coast Guard. We've done a, a presentation on a die-off. Now, tomorrow night, we actually got another die-off show ready to go unfortunately and we're going to do that tomorrow and we'll cover that so there's urban explorers in fukushima in futabar i believe or akuma which are both within two kilometers of uh, four maybe five reactor cores that have melted down and eight Fuel pools, maybe most likely a common spin fuel pool melted also with around 11 and a half million pounds. That would have been complete loss. So these urban explorers who were here in 2019 came back in 2023 to a hospital. And what they discovered was the hospital, everything inside of it was looted was stolen in the nuclear wasteland. Looks empty, we have to go to the other side, I think. This is a stunning revelation. So all of a sudden, they're gonna show us pictures in a little moment here, 
of 2019, the same hospital. It's empty. They took everything in a nuclear wasteland. And then he said, despite being empty, and that was the channel I got it from, despite being empty, there's still a chance the operation theater is still intact because they these often don't get dismantled because they don't understand or they wouldn't be there in the first place. Their Geiger counters, of course, are ineffective. <clears throat> they're going to get brutal doses, and they're not going to be working the way they should anyway, and they can only find at best would be gamma. And they're looking at the microceiver, which is something you shouldn't even be looking at in a radioactive fallout. You should be looking for radioactive fallout, which is physical atoms that are floating around. That would be counts per minute. But these Geiger counters are garbage <coughs> uh, for finding radiation. So they go to this hospital, and it's completely gutted. And they're going to show us, let me go back, and they say, oh my God, they really emptied it. Everything is gone. So they're doing all these rooms are empty. The hallways and everything else is empty. And they're confused. They think that they might be reopening the hospital, in their opinion, but obviously that's not what's happening. You can't, the place is full of mold on top of that. You can't reopen a uh, you know, radioactive hospital. They'll tear this down eventually. But that's, uh, they actually, so, there used to be pink chairs, I think, in this room, they said. So they brought up pictures, and you can see over the corner, 2019, in the far left-hand corner. But this is what it should look like. So somebody went in and stole the radioactive, um, equipment from a hospital and what would you do with that you, you would have sold it right so people are being operated on and exposed to huge levels of radiation from the nuclear wasteland and they're supposed to have police guards there to stop something like this from happening right there's over 300 policemen have died so there's gonna be radioactive um Um, what do you call them? I can't remember. For babies, for instance. All kinds of radioactive equipment. He said, so I've been here a few years ago. The hospital was totally intact and now it's totally emptied. This is an incredible st breaking story. I think the operating theater is somewhere over here. And they're going to bring up 2019 pictures again. Let me go back. I think I shot some quick footage in here with my phone. So they're going to bring up that footage. He said maybe they want to keep the hospital active. Of course, that's not true. They wouldn't be there in the first place with paper mask on if they actually understood what radiation is all about. And so to get to the operating theater, it's completely empty. And now they're going to bring up, uh, and he said, they even wiped up the floor. This is a one of the strangest things I've ever saw. Because you're talking about a nuclear wasteland. So the operating room, one of them was right here. And this is what it should look like. So after and before. So this was all stolen and sold to somebody else, most likely in a poor country. The epitome, and I mean, you're talking about really expensive equipment. This is very expensive stuff. I think it's stunning. So everything, everything got taken out of the hospital. And so you're talking probably a billion dollars worth of equipment. Because if anybody's ever been in the hospital, they know these places are stuffed. They're literally stuffed. So this is what it should look like. You can see to your left, over there, phone footage, 2019. So this is what it should have looked like. This is an incredible story. They're three kilometers, less than two miles away from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. And all of this is stolen from a nuclear wasteland. 
So what else was stolen, I wonder, from the universities, the hospitals, the schools, the, the malls, the car lots, and sold to victims worldwide and will radiate people for many, many years to come. So this is footage, Unfo unfortunately it's a bit blurry, but there was lots of furniture, lots of equipment, the hospital was full of, of um, equipment, right? This was all stolen since 2019, when they were last here. These play everything was stolen. So the only thing they they most likely shipped it to a third world country. But uh, what else have they stolen from these places? And this is for babies, radioactive. F um, so you know what a typical hospital room, like the nurses' stations and everything else, is stuffed. Medicine cabinets, everything, right? And just like those cabinets back there, those locker cabinets, these are very expensive. Every facet here is always... And you can imagine all the little things, right, when you start adding it up. So they were shocked that everything was stolen anyway, uh, and so am I. Okay. We have lots of news to get through. None of it's good, unfortunately. Well, we've seen a baby seal. I showed you that earlier. And a seagull, or a seagull. An eagle. There's a difference, I'm sure. Somebody's tap, tap. Dana's not an e a seagull. You give it to me. Japan's authorities gave reassurance on Friday. Well, that would be if I had a normal, like, couple of thousand viewers, because I'm censored so heavy, that's never going to happen. Japanese authorities gave reassurance on Friday. Japanese authorities. <laughs> yeah. It's like getting a pedophile to babysit your children. That the country's plan to discharge water from the destroyed Fukushima. The water is long like, you can't contain this water. You're talking two sieverts a liter. You couldn't build another tank on site if you filled up one. You couldn't walk over the hoses without getting a lethal dose at these doses. Because uh, four sieverts is a lethal dose. You'll die within a couple of weeks from a short exposure. So imagine 1.4 million in a tank of just better that they... It's a total whitewash... Um, well, no, it's the biggest crime in human history, really. They gave the reassurance to Hong Kong that Fukushima nuclear power plant will pose no harm to the environment or the people of Hong Kong. And Tae's Chin Wan said earlier in the week that the government will step up testing of food products from Japan in, to in uh, Hong Kong, adding that they might even suspend the importation of aquatic food products from Pacific Japanese prefectures. The food was banned from 14 of the prefectures. These are like states or provinces, depending on the country you live in. And that they might even suspend importation of aquatic food products from Japanese prefectures or require them to provide a radiation level report, which is absurd to trust anything these scumbags ever say? How could you ever trust Japan after what they've already done? How does that work? How do you become that stupid? Or require them to, well, you listen to the mainstream media, I guess, or your universities, even worse. Or require them to provide a radiation level report. Would you believe anything that Japan ever said to you? Anything. If, it's, if you were in Japan and it was noon, and someone said in Japan it was noon, would you believe them? I actually wouldn't. Are the monsters who grow food close to evil nuclear plants? All nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. Total, total coincidence, Monia. Or Fukushima Prefecture, are they committing genocide? And we have a staggering 100%. Roger that. Uh, 
Oh, we skipped something, did we? Let's get back on it. Added that although Japanese authorities have no plans to change the existing food labeling arrangement, which is none, business operators are free. There is no labeling. So what an interesting way to frame that. Business operators are free to add in the information if they believe it can ease consumers' concerns. How can you take food from a nuclear wasteland? Hang on. I got, like it's hard to appreciate it because you've been brainwashed for so long if you're not new to this if you're new to this subject. But the food was banned in not just Fukushima Prefecture, which is in the center of 14 prefectures where the food was banned by 55 countries. Not Canada, of course, because Canada is just completely captured by the evil nuclear industry in the early 70s. Growing food alongside a one-ton bags of radiation. Should try making that up on your own. No, no, Dan is like a banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine. Except that it's not. So the whole planet is irradiated. It's not just Japan, but Japan is ground zero. And if I don't warn you about ground zero, how would you ever conceive um, what's really going on after Three Mile Island or Santa Susana or Hanford um, or any nuclear power plant because they're all surrounded by farms. And Japan is so insane. It's it's actual brain damage to grown food right alongside a one ton bags of radiation. And that's the mainstream media pictures, by the way. Trying to trying to um, protect the farmers by talking about harmful rumors when they're grown food right alongside a one ton bags of radiation. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even seem real that they would say something like that and post actual pictures like that. It just, I woke up one day and what planet is this for goodness sakes? So the food was banned by 55 countries, basically the whole planet, except for Canada. Canada had no restrictions, moved, well, allegedly had no restrictions at all, but remo officially said we remove any restrictions we might have had, which was none, after 93 days. So Japan couldn't ship billions and billions of pounds of food anywhere only to Canada and they did and they continue to grow food in nuclear wasteland these are no go zones alongside a one ton bags of radiation harvesting food the director for the international issues at Japan's nuclear accident response office stressed that the food products from Japan carry knowledgeable radiation risk you're, you're growing food in a no-go zone in the middle of a massive nuclear wasteland where the food was banned by 55 countries because it's evil. It's actually evil. And saying that there's no adverse effects. These, these people should be publicly prosecuted and executed for crimes against humanity. And uh, This is why we have a poll tonight. Are monsters who grow food close to evil nuclear plants or to the Fukushima prefecture itself or any of the surrounding prefectures committing genocide? And that's exactly what they're doing. They're committing genocide. This, this is unassailably, unquestionably a genocide. The creepy, disgusting, parasitic monster said the radiological impact could be as small as 1,000, 1,000 of the impact you would get when you receive an x-ray exam. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's physical atoms. They're not putting x-rays in the bags. They're putting physical atoms that are radioactive ionized and there's many different types and all of them when they come from a nuclear meltdown 
are hot particles and just a single one can start you on the path of one too many of 1800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies like heart problems, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. So there's 1800 diseases. <clears throat> it's, gotten, it's, it's pulsing energy every second. An x-ray is a pulse and that's it. These are pulsing energy every second. But in one sense it is uh, x-rays because the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, the betas, the physical atoms, they're pulsing energy, they can't mingle. They're pulsing energy every second, almost at the speed of light. When they hit each other, they change direction. It's known as a braking effect. Discovered by a German physicist, a Bromson lung is what they call it. And it's where you got particles, uh, energy traveling almost at the speed of light, changing direction. That creates an actual x-ray. And so everything is getting a full body x-ray. And that anywhere in that prefecture, let alone the other ones, the worm's excrements is 1.4 million becquels, which are physical atoms, not, not um, x-rays. They're physical atoms. And so your body attacks it every, each one every second for millions of damaged cells and chromosomes around it. So it can also damage your organs, right through your organs and people alongside you, or your, your children that you're holding, your baby that you're holding could be damaged by radiation in your body. Uh, but the director, and now in children, it mutates their stem cells. It gets in their bones and mutates their stem cells. This is true for all species, not just humans. Everything is true for all species, not just humans. The most important thing you can take away from this is we have to protect the female species of all species, rather. Right? Because uh, females get four times more tumors, larger tumors, on top of that, than boys do. And so imagine in insects and animals and birds and mammals and everything else how vulnerable they really are. And this assessment has been reviewed by the degenerate scum at the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is just a corporation that actually shouldn't exist. Jeremy Hunt wants nuclear power. Now, he, this is just a one-minute blurp blurp. In uh, United Kingdom's Parliament, I guess they think they call it, where he done a speech and he promoted nuclear, but only for one minute. And the nuclear industry seized up on that as if, you know, they, they just discovered the goose that laid the golden egg, which was nuclear. UK Chancellor has launched a consultation to classify nuclear as environmentally sustainable. But this was just a one minute blurb. And he doesn't actually have the power to follow through on it. Sizewell B on the Suffolk coast is currently Britain's only nuclear power station scheduled to be running after 2028. They're currently building uh, right in the middle of farmland, another f reactor project, which there's an old one there, surrounded by farms. You know why it's surrounded by farms? because you move the radiation out of the local area regularly, right? And you poison the people that eat it. That's actually why they do it that way. In his budget speech, he announced a competition, because <coughs> they, they won't spend a nickel out of their own on nuclear, to co-fund the small nuclear plants. Rolls-Royce small nuclear plant is almost as big as the big nuclear plants. It has nothing to do with small modular reactors, but that's what they call it. It's half the size of a large nuclear power plant. It's around 500 megawatts. And they call it the small modular reactors. And hopes to a new delivery broad body called the Great British Nuclear. Great British Nuclear. What a despicable thing to name it. What a, and it's obviously posturing is just meant to loot the taxpayers, not meant to actually follow through 
will ease the creation of nuclear projects. Will ease it. Like, they need about 150 billion just to clean up the nuclear waste from the legacy nuclear era. 150 billion. They have nowhere to put it, and everything is still splitting the atoms into the environment. This is the problem with nuclear waste. The, the hidden reality of nuclear waste is it's still splitting the atoms. There's no containment. Do you really think there's going to be any species left even without Fukushima? No. It's endless radioactive fallout from a thousand fuel pools on top of that worldwide currently as we speak. All of them still splitting the atoms. It's uh, And they knew what this was all about and they continued to uh, proliferate it. And then, so Three Mile Island was the end of the fake renaissance in the United States. Chernobyl was the end of the renaissance for Europe. Santa Susana should have been the end of it for all of it, which released more radiation than 460 Three Mile Islands. And Three Mile Islands was a huge plumes, what they call cancer plumes. But again, there's 1,800 diseases, not just cancer. These videos are a public service to everybody worldwide and the 8 million species. Brought to you by a couple of handfuls of people, like myself, and they watch the show and participate in the dialogue. And as the world is being exterminated and permanently destroyed in all the species, we, this little beacon, little tiny, tiny, tiny beacon of light is here, shining bright like a little lighthouse for the world to find its way forward. Does Britain need nuclear power? Of course it doesn't. You can do everything with geothermal better than you can with nuclear. Why wouldn't you use geothermal? It's everywhere. And some places it's a little deeper than other places. And so any university could come up with cheaper technologies. It's, it exists. It's completely benign. You can recycle everything back into building another one. And so they ex excluded it from the narrative and only gave you uh, big, stupid wind turbines and solar power. You can use them in certain applications like in deserts and stuff like that. But the idea is to put them where they'll drive you crazy so you'll complain about it and do their work for them. You know, and I've said this many times over the years, the best solar power setup would look like a Christmas tree. And so it would collect sun. It wouldn't need to rotate to collect the sun or the energy. And it would have much more territory in a very tiny place. So if you built tall trees that looked just like a tree, it no longer was an eyesore, and it didn't need to move to collect the sun. No matter where you put it, in which direction, it was always the right direction, right? So basically, because you can build artificial Christmas trees right now pretty cheap. If you coated it with something that absorbed the sunlight, and they actually have paint now, and you put universities to work on this, you can flood all the Walmarts and everything else worldwide with these solar power installations that look like trees in your garden. And birds would hang out in it, and, and it would be like a little uh, paradise of solar panels. Proponents argue that, that nuclear provides a base load of power that can be relied upon, where renewable like wind and solar is dependent upon weather condition. Again, this is the argument we've been listening to for decades, when in reality geothermal resolves everything, doesn't need no storage, and it's 100% uh, reliable for a couple of million years. And it's right there, everybody can tap into it. And you kind of, a lot of people do, it's like heat exchangers, where they go down 100 or 200 feet, and they just exchange heat into the house and keep the ambient temperatures at around 60 degrees. Remember, uh, we covered this story about uh, the Soviet Union where the Americans 
wanted to make nuclear landmines. But to stop nuclear landmines from freezing, they were going to put chickens in with the nuclear weapons. Because their body temperature would stop the landmine from freezing and maybe... Because you know how uh, back in World War II, landmines, the frost would set off the landmines? Proponents argue nuclear provides a base load of power that can be relied on, whereas nuclear, uh, wind and solar is, well, like nuclear is hemorrhaging radiation into the environment 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never stops. So everybody should protest nuclear each day. There should be at least 10,000 people in front of every nuclear plant every day forever until they're gone. <clears throat> nuclear is a disease factory. It has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. It's guaranteed to make you sick. It's guaranteed to hurt your children immediately. And it doesn't matter where you're to on the planet. The whole planet was covered in radioactive fallout. Now, the nuclear industry has a lot of despicable scum that will stalk people and try to intimidate them. And it's very successful. They've been at this for 80 years. You have to treat nuclear as a weapon coming at your planet, as a meteorite. Now, I've been saying this for over a decade straight. Unfortunately, I'm on scumbag YouTube where the lobbyists have taken over. But consider subscribing and clicking the bell. It might work. It probably won't, but it might. We know the like, the like button doesn't work once the video is finished. Consider sharing me on different social networking sites. You don't have to put my name or anything. Just put down uh, dolphins or put down uh, pictures of politicians. Just put something there that got nothing to do with nuclear, and then people can watch end up watching the video and all of a sudden they're hooked on reality don't be a zombie don't don't give spider-man to your children or your grandchildren or your friends children discourage them from the whole discourage which were created by the nuclear industry to make your children complacent same as wonder woman and and uh the krypton is lethal to children's blood by the way all of these fake superheroes, so you can't be their hero. Nobody can be their hero on a Marvel comics and the nuclear industry like Spider-Man and the Hulk, right? Or, you know, GoPro hero, diluted it with Guitar Hero. Uh, and so the children, your children no longer look at you or your grandparents or anybody as heroes. You can't, you can't compete with all the fake caricatures of heroes that exist worldwide. Remember, in the old days, we used to get rid of our problems, and that was the end of it. We got to get back to those days of getting rid of our problem, and nuclear needs to be getting rid of. If anybody should be getting rid of, it's the nuclear industry, because they're like friggin' aliens. They hate all of us. They hate us. They hate every species on the planet. They are a weapon against us, right? <clears throat> there goes the pro-nuclear. You gotta have a conversation about this. And I'm providing you more than enough documentation that you can have a conversation if you really... You can win any debate in the nuclear industry with the documentation I provide you. You can win it, you can beat them in court any time at all. Why is nuclear being reclassified to attract uh, money? The consultation is on the taxonomy, which is the European Union, which I didn't think the United Kingdom was no longer. Is Britain the first country to do it? No, the European Commission decided last year to label nuclear as green, but does that mean it's actually green? It's absurd to suggest that it is. And we covered it when it was happening. It's a complete betrayal. It's disgusting. And it's typical of what we've been looking at now for almost 80 years where the nuclear industry makes sure you can't have a future, your children can't have a future, that no species can have a future. That's what we get from the nuclear industry. For 80 years of this death grip, and now 
it's going to be very difficult to have future generations of any species. The EU Parliament said the taxonomy change aimed to boost investments, green investments, and prevent greenwashing. And that's what it was. It's 100% greenwashing. But it's a disease factory. That's what nuclear is. The backers of small nuclear reactors, including a program developed by Rolls-Royce, which is not a small modular reactor. These are 500 megawatt reactors. These are, are as big as the small, large uh, nuclear reactors. D these are not modular. These are not going to be built in factories and transported on. These are massive disease factories on top of that. And, of course... Uh, I can't remember the name of that, that one for some reason. Is the biggest project worldwide of construction ever undertaken. It's not size well C, it's the other one. I don't know why I can't remember it, but hey, that happens once in a while, I notice. In order to attract money, because they're not going to put anything into it, the Great British Nuclear which is just another scam, and you can guarantee you whoever is on that panel of Great British Nuclear is going to be some serious scumbags from the nuclear industry. These are going to be real degenerates. They'll be going after your pensions to use for nuclear. The Great British hoax called nuclear. Government's goal of 24 gigawatts in this decade. This is absurd to suggest you're going to build 24 large nuclear reactors in the United Kingdom in the next seven years. It's ludicrous to suggest you're going to finish two. But to suggest you're going to have 24 gigawatts, which is the equivalent of 24 large nuclear reactors. You can have all the money you want. You don't have the manpower. You don't even have the manpower to build the two they're trying to build now. In his first emergency budget in November, these people always sound like they're insane. They always sound like they're under deathbed and they're just talking gibberish and it's a dangerous gibberish. Which is one of the reasons I wanted to open an old age home just for these types of people. So you can get them in the old age home and then pump them for information. And then prosecute the scum that they uncover. <laughs> they have no idea how lucky they are. They really don't. And, and Britain, of course, when you look at Britain's legacy, my goodness... So Britain had a nuclear meltdown in 59. And what they done was they went to theaters and kidnapped people from the back rows rather than look for volunteers from all the other nuclear power plants or nuclear universities. The police uh, from the factory had turned up looking for volunteers. Uh, and they brought a bus and they decided the best way to get the volunteers was to go to the cinema and uh, and volunteer the back two rows uh, at the uh, at the show to go into the factory to uh, as it turned out to uh, help push the fuel rods out of the uh, out of the reactor. So they kidnapped people from the back rows of the theater to go into the nuclear meltdown. I put this together because it's such an amazing story of scumbags, scumbaggery. Uh, Britain's notorious for being a scumbag, by the way. Let me give you an example of the advertisement they were doing on TV in 11 different countries, but Britain put it together. Right, kids, just before you go, there's a brilliant idea in the air that I'd like to run by you. Now, it's called 1010. The idea is everyone starts cutting their carbon emissions by 10%. Thus, keeping the planet safe for everyone, eventually. Now, this hasn't got to be a huge thing, but I would love it if you and your families would think about doing something. What sort of thing, miss? Well, like getting your dad to insulate the loft, 
Or taking your next holiday by train instead of flying. Or buying energy saving light bulbs. We're thinking of using our car less. I'm going to cycle to school. That's fantastic, Jemima. Now, no pressure at all, but it'd be great to get a sense of how many of you might do this. Just a rough percentage. That's fantastic. And there's not. Philip and Tracy. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Your own choice. OK, class, thank you so much for today. And I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, just before you go, I just need to press... This little button here. Now, everybody, please remember to read chapters five and six on volcanoes and glaciation. Except for Philip and Tracy, of course. Now, there's all kinds of these commercials. They play them on TV constantly, all day, all night. With the intentions of traumatize, traumatizing all the children, and so the children would attack the parents and attack you on the side of the street. So there was a Sizewell C nuclear plant and a Hinkley Point C nuclear plant. Two of them have something unique in common. They're both surrounded by farms and they're both uh, being built. So the only reason to build it in farmland is if you wanted to poison everybody. That's a perfect way to do it, right? So we're gonna poll tonight, are monsters who grow food close to evil nuclear plants, because nuclear plants are the definition of evil, or Fukushima Prefecture committing genocide. We got 100%. Roger that. 700 million is what the government pumped into it last year before um, Boris Johnson was ousted. What a disgusting parasite he turned out to be. Pro-nuclear degenerate monster who removed all restrictions from the nuclear wasteland just before he was forced to step down for corruption. And it wasn't redacted. And we had polls asking should he reinstate the ban now that Boris the Monster Johnson has been removed. Potential investors in nuclear have repeatedly told ministers that technology's long-term cost in managing waste plus stratospheric capital costs kept their checks books shut. Well, first off, like, geothermal actually exists and it's cheap and it's uh, way better than nuclear could ever hope or dream to be or anything else. It's com so quiet, it's so effective, it has so many uh, applications. It's so easy to. UK classes nuclear as environmentally sustainable and unveils support for reactors that don't exist. UK don't even have one on paper. They don't even have one on paper. How is that even possible? How, do, how are they going to have a nuclear renaissance when they don't even have a working model on paper? And you're looking at like a million pieces of paper. It has to go through the inspection. They have to re-engineer it again. It has to go through another four years of inspections. Then they got to build a, a toy model. They got to get the kinks out of that, re-engineer that. Right, so the list is huge before you actually get to a working model. You're looking at 20 to 30 to 40 years, typically maybe 40 years is more appropriate because you don't have one. So it's completely speculative that they will do anything that they claim. Hunt spent about a minute talking about nuclear and the media literally went crazy, went into a frenzy that hasn't stopped since last Friday, Thursday. Nuclear power will be classed as environmentally sustainable in the UK's green taxonomy. Why is the UK calling um, their energy portfolio green taxonomies? Why are they using the EU term, for goodness sakes? They can't come up with something on their own? Or is they figured that worked for brainwashing the EU? Why not UK? 
it's a complete unbelievable betrayal that should never be able to happen. It's going backwards at 170 miles per hour. Giving it access to the same investments incentives as renewable energy. But who's going to invest in it? So they'll steal your pension because nobody will steal invent will invest in it. To put people in key positions in your pension organizations and they'll steal the money. They'll invest it in disgusting nuclear. They've already done it multiple times, right? Minnesota regulator says they're monitoring the cleanup of a leak of 400,000 gallons. A leak. A leak. A leak. Which is 1.5 million liters, by the way. And you can't just have... By the way, this place is surrounded by farms. Big surprise. And fresh water. Surrounded by farms. You know Why? Because that's what nuclear does. It's If it's evil, nuclear's game on. Regulators, not, they're the non-regulatory agencies. Now, what was interesting about this story, we covered it uh, within an hour of it showing up in the cycle. It, they knew about the, the leak for four months. Now, if you go out and research it, the story... You'll see the word leak shoved down your throat constantly everywhere you go. Right? Leak is shoved down your throat. Leak, leak, leak. It's supposed to spill over, but hey. Leak, 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 leak. Do you get it? You get what kind of scam this industry actually is? Leak, 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 leak. Four, like this is 370 45 gallon drums a day. That's not a leak. 1.5 million liters is not a leak. Leak, 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 leak. Oh, your media world boy come leak, 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 leak. And so nobody's even able to rationalize. Wait a second. 1.5 million liters is not a leak. 370 45 gallon drums a day is not a leak. We had 375 drums of anything at your home. Would you call it a leak? If it was at your business, would your boss call it a leak? If you had to pay for it, would you call it a leak? Xcel Energy, Monticello Nuclear Power Plant. Uh, they decided not to tell you because they didn't know where it was coming from. You know why there's a hundred sirens around these disease factories? Because you only got a few minutes to get it of harm's way. They waited four months, then called it a leak and told you it was tritium. Said, hey, idiot, it's just tritium, idiot. Okay, idiot, stop looking, idiot. I said stop looking on the nuclear industry, you little idiot. Go tell your friends it's got a tritium leak, morons. That's what they done to you. And everybody sucked it up and done exactly what they told them to do. Go back to sleep. Nothing has harmed you. Ignore Dana. UN Nuclear Watchdog says 2.5 tons of uranium... Why didn't you put 238 there, I wonder? Because it sounds more salacious when you say uranium's gone missing. If this was just raw yellow cake. There's two types of yellow cake, just to confuse you. One gone through a chain reaction, one that just came out of the ground. Two of them are infinitely different. But they call both of them yellow cake to confuse you, to manipulate you, to deceive you. There's nothing in the industry that, there's not a person in the nuclear industry that is worth saving. There's not a single human, they look like human, but they got nothing to do with humans. They're, they're just filthy, disgusting, despicable lawyers. They really truly are just some weird creature that shouldn't be on this planet. In a normal world, we would have got rid of these creatures a long time ago. But they come out with these salacious headlines when it's just yellow cake. 
You can't turn it into weapons. It's yellow. It's 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 despicable that they done that. And it's been missing for years. So why did you bring it up now? To be scum, right? Because that's what they're good at. They're only good at being scumbags. They're no good at anything else. Nuclear partially included in the EU's Net Zero Industry Act. And this is by the world's biggest scumbags, the World Nuclear News, which is a pro-nuclear lobbying group that Google puts on a pedestal. I don't even show up in the search engines. And if I do, it's always the worst that they've said about me that gets promoted. It's never, hey, Dana's actually in a normal everyday person who went to war for you and your loved ones because you didn't know the difference. That's what history will show that I done. Clean technology in the EU, EU. How can you call the dirtiest technology in human history the most lethal technology, the most the biggest disease factory in human history? Clean technology. Well, their parents were scumbags in the nuclear industry, and their parents were degenerate scumbags in the nuclear industry, and their parents were degenerate monsters for the nuclear industry. What do you expect? The industry is full of these inbreeds, eh? Are the degenerate, despicable, coward monsters who grow food close to evil nuclear plants or Fukushima Prefecture, let alone in it, committing a genocide? But of course they are, I'm sure. Look at them. They're surrounded by farms. EU Net Zero Industry Act, making the EU the home of clean energy. And to show you this nuclear power plant from Germany, and when you look it up, it's surrounded by, you guessed it, farms. Look it up yourself. It's surrounded by farms. And almost every story about nuclear plants will show you a picture like that instead of uh, the picture of what it actually looks like. Surrounded by farms. You think that's an accident that they don't show you that? Or they'll show you a close-up picture of the farm with the plant in the background. They will do that. I'll give them credit. They are definitely evil. You know, like the UK is building two nuclear plants at this time. And both of them are in prime farmland. Nuclear energy is low carb. Nuclear energy, first off, you can't have any plants, any insects, any humans, any trees, any biota without carbon. You know, that's what carbon actually is, life. It's, it's radioactive fallout is your problem, not carbon. They, they didn't ban food from 14 prefectures because of carbon. They banned it because of radioactive isotopes, atoms, physical atoms. Not because of carbon. Carbon is not killing your planet. This is pulsing energy. You're talking about plumes that covers the planet. Nuclear is so evil, it's hard for people to comprehend how evil it actually is. And I still don't understand that, but... This is 16 days of Fukushima radioactive fallout. 16 days. When it stops, I'm going to double that speed up. And this model is from France. So after 16 days, the whole planet is buried in radioactive fallout. Do you, like, do you think it turns to fairy dust after 16 days? Do you really realize what just happened in the lousy 16 days? You got the planet from the bottom of the ocean floor to the to the stars hemorrhaging. It never stopped coming out just because the model stopped. It, it never stopped. And all fuel pools worldwide are doing the same thing, by the way. There's a thousand of them. It's pulsing energy almost at the speed of light at, in every direction like an explosion every second. That's energy. That's global warming. It's been doing it for 80 years. Carbon doesn't do that. Carbon doesn't cover the planet in a big plume, and pulse energy every second for millions of years, okay? Every time you hear the word carbon, whoever says it, 
call him an idiot. Nuclear fuel in the, car, in the comments section, link them to that description that I just gave you. Nuclear fuel will be produced in Ukraine and exported to European countries. In fact, if you clipped out that explanation that I just gave you about that, and you got it viral all over the place, the world would be a lot better in no time at all. That's why I'm censored, right? Because I bring you common sense. You really think that doing this for over a decade and I still can only get 24 people on my live show is normal? Does anybody really think that's normal? If I was here wrapping shit on a stick and calling a fertilizer, there'd be 30,000 of people here right now yucking it up. Uh, if that was uh, went through a chain reaction, he couldn't pick it up or get that close to it without getting a lethal dose and dying immediately, by the way. And in order to make that little pellet, the amount of chemicals that was released into the environment, the emissions for thousands or for millions of years after 18 months, um, is staggering. It's staggering. Once you take it out of the reactor, it never stops splitting atoms into the environment. So each day worldwide, these plumes are produced just by fuel pools, but they're actually much worse than that. And the, they never go away. And tomorrow will be another massive plume covering the planet. It never goes away. And so eventually exterminates everything. All the bacteria, all the fungus, all the biota, all the flora, all the fauna. Nothing can survive what's coming. So you have to fight now. This is the only opportunity humanity will ever have, is to fight right now with everything it's got. Ukraine is ready to produce nuclear fuel that could supply Ukraine. Ukraine! Which hasn't won any war. Which has a lunatic at the helm. An absolute moron at the helm. And it's just part of this... Um, young global leaders, World Economic Forum, charade that was planned probably 20 or 30 years ago. This was meant to artificially cause inflation to distract you from the scamdemic that happened. Because, you know, Justin Trudeau, Angela Merkel, Vladimir Putin, all of these people were young global leaders with the World Economic Forums. A globalist think tank. Total coincidence, Dana. Ukraine in its turn has already started production of components of fuel units. Will later start the production of... They're in a war and they're so evil they still can't stop making disease factories. Monticello nuclear plant leaked 1.5 million liters. 370 45 gallon drums a day is not a leak. And so all the media has went through a lot of trouble to manipulate you with that narrative. It was a lot more than 400,000 gallons on top of that. And that's a catastrophic amount. You don't leak tritium from a nuclear plant. You leak everything but tritium. Nuclear energy could be the savior of net zero strategies. Uh, this is pure desperation is what we're seeing in all these headlines. It's just absolute unmitigated desperation to prop up the disease factory that is nuclear. It's 100% panic. Nuclear energy because a savior? How can nuclear energy be a savior of anything when all it does is destroy everything? New Brunswick Power here in Canada, so Canada is not immune to stupid. New Brunswick Power prepares for small modular nuclear reactors. They don't exist. You can't prepare for something that don't exist. So this is how they rob the taxpayers with these fables. A radio host at Australia, Ben Fordham, called on Australia to embrace nuclear power as energy bills because of the war. When the war is over, the bills will start importing fuel again. This was a self-inflicted inflation. 
as soon as uh, they announced embargoes from all the United Nations, which is, shouldn't exist, you had 195 countries, well, militaries, and by proxy to countries that are enslaved by UN, the AKA the New World Order. And you got these, like when you see a radio host in a suit, that's not a radio host, okay? That's a lobbying for anything that'll pay the bills. That's gonna be a degenerate. And he's gonna use nothing but evil tactics to sway the complacent that are listening to the radio show. You have to be insane to trust the media or just perfectly brainwashed all your life. It's not too late to break away from this evil machine. You're not going to find me on the, on the radio. The truth is not allowed there. It's not allowed on TV. It's not allowed on the radio. It's not allowed in the mainstream media. And the truth is com called common sense, by the way, which is very difficult to come across when people are addicted to the idiot machine. He says, Australia is too timid or too stupid to embrace nuclear. Well, good for him. Yay, yay, whoopee do. You can't quantify an assertion. You shouldn't use the assertion. The rest of the world has no problem, really. The rest of the world has no problem with nuclear. There's an understatement. Nuclear is dying. There is no nuclear renaissance. Radioactive waste will be managed in Australia. They want to bury it in prime farmland. And this is only medical waste. They want to bury it in a deep geological repository because it's so radioactive. But yet they put it in you. They put you in a million dollar room full of lead so you don't radiate the people in the hallway. And then you get sick and die. Is there a coincidence? Nah, never. What? Why would it be a coincidence? Total conspiracy, Dana. We want to put it down in the ground because we, we like big holes in the ground, Dana. Rolls-Royce wins funding for nuclear-powered moon-based research. This is not a nuclear-powered reactor, but they, they're going to call it a reactor in the story. Uh, anything to do with Rolls-Royce is ridiculous. You know why you don't see Rolls-Royce for sale in car lots? You know where you see it? At weapons shows for the military-industrial complex, you'll see the Rolls-Royces because there's a lot of wealthy people in the weapons facilities. And that's what Rolls-Royce is really good at, is weapons. So they're claiming they're going to make a reactor, but these are not reactors. Reactor needs a lot of water. So they, they're, they're just talking about the same technology they used uh, for space exploration, where the evil scum used man-made anthropogenic radiation to send it into deep space. Small reactors could empower First Nations. This really scum, Ian Ross. What a scumbag thing to do. Trying to convince the natives in Canada and Saskatchewan, Ontario, to buy, to sign memorandums, so-called, of understandings, right, this false, fabled, small modular reactors, which doesn't exist. And it won't exist because the world is coming to its senses. So this is the industry trying to loot everything and everybody before the gig is up. And they have endless supply of useful idiots to do it for them. They took a they took a ice cream container, put windows on it, laid it on a model, and took a picture of it, and called it a small modular reactors, with the biggest freshwater aquifers left on the planet right behind it, where you know everything runs downhill into that. These produce thirty times more low-level waste, which compared to fuel rods, low-level waste will still kill you pretty quick. Fuel rods will kill you right away. It'll produce 30 times, 35 times more intermediate waste, which is very high-level waste, and six times more fuel rods than a conventional reactor of the same size. And it's going to be used in mixed oxide fuel, which is known as MOX fuel. And they don't have a supply of it anywhere on the planet on top of that. Well, Russia. They got an embargo against Russia so they can uh, drive the prices up for you and your loved ones so you can't even afford to pick them up 
at the daycares anymore. Took her six and nine year old kids on a tour of McMaster University on campus small modular reactors. This is not a small modular reactor at uh, at uh, McMaster University, for goodness sakes. Uh, they like they do. By the way, they've done uh, sex ratio studies around these uh, university reactors. They're not they're not powering sixteen thousand homes or something like that. These are turned on and off. These are just demonstration mock-ups. Uh, you know, they are harmful, though. They're using real fuel, but the system is not a small modular reactor. You're not producing power for thousands and thousands of homes or even a university. These are just for experiments. So to call them small modular reactors, you're, you're, you're a disgusting maggot to do something like that. She mentioned her experience in an online panel discussion hosted by McDonnell Laurier Institute, finding a good fit in indigenous people in small nuclear reactors. So she's either stupid or a useful I idiot for the nuclear industry here in Canada. But she's definitely not smart. She's not displaying anything clever. She, she's just regurgitating the same lie we've been listening to for 80 years. The technology's still in the design stage. Well, I thought you said they had a small modular reactor. You know, when they've done the sex ratio studies of males, more males than females, is what they discovered around all of these university reactors. Which meant everybody in that area had to be poisoned to be able to get that discrepancy. They can't contain it. Like idiots, you can't contain them. The chief scientist, Richard Bodur, or whatever his name is, chief scientist with the Canadian Space Mining Corporation. What kind of stupid name is that Space Mining Corporation? Canada doesn't mine anything in space, so why not name it something more appropriate? And chair of the Regina-based First Nations University of Canada. You can imagine what kind of dirtbag this person is. When diesel generators break down in the winter, it's a crisis. Diesel generates pollution that harms people's health and contributes to climate change. Like, really? That's, you're still going to regurgitate that kind of narrative all these years later? You can't heat anything without releasing pollution, for starters. It doesn't contribute to climate change because it doesn't fall very far from the sources. It's not like nuclear where it covers the whole planet in plumes and pulses energy every second for millions of years. Gas, oil, and coal doesn't do this model, which is 20 days. This model is 19.6 days covering the whole planet. Gas, oil, and coal emissions don't do that. Carbon doesn't do that. Carbon doesn't pulse energy every second and plumes covering the entire planet. Wake up. Stop being stupid. And their chair of the First Nations University. You can imagine how many poor victims come out of that institution. It's a victim machine is what that institution is. Australia to buy 220 Tommy Hawk cruise missiles. Like, why would you... These are like $2 million, $3 million each. Uh, Australia, right, has got all the big top military industrial complexes set up during the last 10 years. So when the military moved in there about 10 years ago, we covered it. And now all the big manufacturers of weapons have moved there also. This is why they need the submarines, right, to give them jobs at those facilities. I'll cover that tomorrow, not tomorrow night, but the next night, by the way. In a deal worth $900 million, well, you get, you get a bit of a discount when you buy 220 apparently. What does Australia need that for? Really, Australia going to go to war with somebody? Whoever it is, they're not going to have weapons to fire back, that's for sure. Australia now is officially, the military industrial complex has now started looting the economy. They put the politicians in key positions and now they're, now they're going for broke. 
comes just days after Australia announced it would buy three nuclear power attack submarines. Three days after. No, no coincidence. The penalty finally drops on nuclear energy. Newfound fate nuclear capabilities. No, because that's what she was uh, elected to do. She was put in that position, rather, which was uh, appointed more so than elected, so that she can give the okay to the nuclear industry, which is firmly entrenched in the country as of the last 10 years. I'll cover that on uh, Wednesday and Tuesday night. 1.5 million liters leaked. See, 1.5 million liters is not a leak. It's so despicable. In fact, I'll show you what a leak looks like gone to extreme. This is, they call this a leak. This is NOAA's model of the radioactive fallout based on 40 days from Japan. And that's called a leak. And this model, of course, is not an accurate model. It's much worse than that. The model is only based on venting. It's not based on the actual nuclear meltdown. What else is new? Our monsters, degenerate, disgusting, despicable monsters who grow food close to the evil nuclear power plants or even close to Fukushima prefecture, let alone in the prefecture, committing genocide and crimes against humanity. Well, yes, they are, Dana. Wow, we got 25 people on the show. How is that even possible? How do we get that many people? I'm completely confused. I'm afraid to do the show. I'm not used to that many people watching my show at one time. A little self-conscious. Should have checked out the nose here before I went live here. There's no immediate risk to the public health, health rights to BBC. Uh, the BBC, the ABC Australia, the BBC in the United Kingdom, CBC in Canada, the CBS in the United States, these, these are actual demonic uh, corporations, real brainwashing demonic demons to people that work there. There's no immediate risk to the public health rights to BBC, who hid Jimmy Savile, which raped around 1,300 children at the BBC itself and in hospital rooms. Leaked and hid it for uh, over three decades. We discovered in November, <laughs> we're in the nuclear industry, so we didn't tell you jack shit. And now we're going to tell you it's a leak. Didn't pose a, now it's, it's on the actual Mississippi River itself. No, 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 nothing made it to the river. Uh, it can, how can it not make it to the river, see? An international criminal court ordered the arrest of Valdemir Putin. How's that going to play out, I wonder? That one kind of got me worried. Build a movement to oppose Australia's nuclear submarines, which is a great idea. Now's the time to get busy. Uh, but uh, it's too late. Today they announced endless announcements. Uh, universities, and all kinds of money located to schools and the industry to prop them up to build equipment for the idiot. So they're going to have a military. They're going to be like Israel where they have a military industry which is powering the comp country. Australia is officially now destroyed. And I'll cover that on Tuesday night. Australia would be acquiring nuclear power submarines in a massive escalation of militarism, undermining peace in the world. Well, like, Australia has all the military industrial complexes have set up shop there, and they don't have an industry for them. And so that's what this is about, a $350 billion dollar um, orgy theft of the resources of the country on top of that. Dedicated to the stupidest thing in the world, nuclear submarines. Literally the stupidest thing imaginable 
is a nuclear submarine with nuclear weapons. You can't even use them, and you're going to spend 60 years out there playing on the ocean. Like, the maintenance on these things is two for one. For every day on the ocean, you need two days of maintenance. It's a stupid, great big, idiot money pit. There's no way for the country to survive once they start blowing the money on this. And the reason this is happening is because you have the military industrial, American... Hang on. It's so stupid. I don't know if I can find it. Sometimes I'm pretty good, but other times I'm not. Oh, yeah, I found it. There we go. So the story, we'll cover this on... Uh, Take a look at some of the great work our homegrown, our homegrown defense technology companies are already doing. Our homegrown, and look at the com companies that they're talking about. Lockheed Martin, which is a mass of international com uh, companies, not Australia. Raytheon is a massive military industrial complex. Boeing is a massive military industrial complex. General Dynamics is a national, international. BAE is an international. L3 Harris is another international. Northrop Grumman. All of these are weapons manufacturings. Largest weapons manufacturing plant is Northrop's. These are not homegrown. So this is why they're getting the submarines. They need the submarines so these guys can all get contracts, right, to make money. Because they're set up shop in Australia over the last 10 years. They got no way of making money unless Australia builds into a massive military industrial complex and and uh, forgets about everybody in the country. So whenever they show up, it means you're going to impoverish the country so they can make profits for their investors. Right? They have to cannibalize your country to exist. That's what's hap just happened. Officially today, by the way, to Australia. And so you can't stop it now you, unless you go full out war over the next month or two. You need a million people in the streets constantly to drive. You need to drive those organizations out of there. You need, basically, you need to burn them down, figuratively speaking, of course. Years ago, you would, of course, burn them right to the ground. But you need to get rid of all those military industrial complexes because they're, they're not going to stop until they loot your entire country and, and it... They'll take their time. They'll take the next hundred years and just loot your country. And they'll they'll dump all their chemicals all over your country. They'll pollute your country. They'll abuse your children. You have no future with all those corporations. And they're all now officially set up in Australia. And that's why you have this massive nuclear industry showing up. And that's the only result you're going to see is they're going to loot the country, right? There's no other way back. That's the only thing they're good at is destruction. That's what they do for a living. They murder and rape. Where the hell did two people come from? There was two of us there for a second. Public now being notified of nuclear power plant spill four months later. See, they're the only ones that called it a spill. Everybody else called it a leak like good slaves. Nuclear industry doesn't even have to report massive spills. New Scale got a triple subscription levels for something that doesn't exist by 2024, or they got to kick back the money that the investors put in the company. So I guess they're going to be robbing somebody. It ain't going to be themselves. So the taxpayer is about to get robbed down there. New Scale has been around 18 years. It hasn't produced anything. It allegedly got a paper model into the regulatory agencies, the non-regulatory agencies, but they admit that it's completely incomplete. And so they, they gave it a rubber stamp, but it, they can't build something just because they gave it a rubber stamp. It's incomplete. And all they have is these cartoon drawings. 
But if you don't make, if you don't get a massive amount of investors by 2024, they're going to have to kick back whatever the investors put into it because that was the original plan. The prices have doubled according to the original price that they first came out with per gigawatt or megawatt. It's just low life, eh? The whole industry not even low life. And they're not ashamed of it. That's who they are. They, they know that. I don't need to tell them. That's nothing new to them. They know they're low life scum. Germany and Spain to clear war on nuclear energy. And the scumbag who wrote this, there's so many degenerate people in the nuclear industry, we actually can't keep up with it. It's pointless to get upset anymore. All you can do is just call a scumbag a scumbag. Is how I always say it, right? A scum. Once a scumbag, and once you're a, a pro nuclear scumbag, you're always a scumbag. That'll never change. You were a scumbag before that, and you'll always be a scumbag. Writers, writers reports that seven EU states are rallying against ambitions in France to expand nuclear energy infrastructure in Europe. Germany leads the charge. And they have a right to, by the way. In the aftermath of World War II, in the case of France especially, which is a degenerate scum. What a degenerate scum nuclear industry they got. They're a hideous, just a hideous. I mean, what they've done to the French Polynesians was just revolting. And Niger, which apparently they're going to open up another uranium mine in Niger. 60 years of pollution. 60 years of destroying the government, 60 years of getting rid of borders, and 60 years of supplying weapons to uh, countries on their border. They destroyed millions and millions and millions of lives so they can get cheap uranium for their idiot disease factory reactors. And all French reactors are surrounded by farms, right up to the fences, all of them. And the biggest freshwater resource, 70% of the freshwater of France goes to the nuclear industry. Even the fish are not allowed to live in France. I, I think France is disgusting. Move the people out of there and bomb it into non-existence. Japan urges Hong Kong to weigh scientific evidence before curbing seafood import. What scientific evidence? Japan has never provided. Japan uses a public relation firm to talk about nuclear. They got no, like the whole country is polluted. Everything, all the water, all the infrastructure, every farmer's field, every schoolyard, everything is contaminated, every city. The sewage is too radioactive to get rid of, the water reclamation sediment is too radioactive to get rid of, the... Ashes from the incinerators are too radioactive to get rid of. You know, how the hell do we ever get to that point? Like that stupid level uh, into the stars of the stupid and then there's nuclear. Well, there's stupid and then there's the rest of the world, which is nuclear. Hong Kong, the way science, Japan urges. Japan doesn't even know what the word science is, for God's sakes. No negative impact of food safety expected. Of course, Japan is not even one great, big, stupid nuclear wasteland. Here, I'll give you an example. After such a thing as a little example. <clears throat> See, I hate Japan just a little bit more because it's making me do all this extra work all the time. Japan, the scumbag of Earth. Yeah, it's so... It's, it's so bad, it's hard to wrap your mind around how actual evil this industry is. I'll give you an example though. And Japan is crazy.
Bear with me. Because when you're talking about the numbers we're talking about, you can't just breeze past all the important stuff. Here we go. We're almost ready. I just going to take you out to around two or three hundred kilometers from the plant. It cracks me up how absolutely batshit crazy the industry actually is. Okay. Just give me a second. Here we go. So Tokyo, 250 kilometers away, 50,000 becquels a kilogram of cesium. So they're not acknowledging beta, alphas, and neutrons or x-rays. They're only going to acknowledge gamma and just very, only cesium at that. 4,000 becquels a kilogram in the fog in Tokyo. Tokyo is completely radioactive wasteland. Chiba, which is 20 kilometers from the ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns. 40 millisieverts, 40,000 microsieverts per hour at a supermarket in Tokyo. Plumes of Superman crept on 85 over Tokyo. So everybody's going to turn into Superman or the Hulk or Spider-Man, Dana. The doctor finds uranium zirconium cladding on her people's fingernails in Tokyo. 1.5 million becquels a square meter in a church in Tokyo. 900,000 becquels a square meter in the topsoil in Tokyo. 300,000 becquels a square meter in uh, drinking water, the biggest, world's largest drinking water reservoir of its kind, meant to supply water for 36 million people. 18 million becquels a square meter uh, in the top soil near Tokyo. 29 million in the soil in another study after rain out in Tokyo. The water's unsafe for infants. That means the water pipes are permanently ra uh, radioactive. You should be long gone. You should have been gone on March the 23rd. Never looking back. Everybody. Like you can't radiate something 250 kilometers away without radiating the whole country. You, you didn't ban the food in worldwide in 14 prefectures by 55 countries for a decade because it's harmless, okay? Because it's like carbon or something. You don't ban the food around gas plants, oil plants, and coal plants. You don't have to uh, worry about carbon. Carbon is your friend. You can't have life without carbon. Japan urges Hong Kong to waste scientific evidence. But Japan... Is and so they're allegedly growing flounder and halibut in salt water from water from the reactors themselves. But the water from the reactors, they need salt water for those types of uh, sea fish, right? These are salt water fish, these are not freshwater fish. And so, and saying that they're growing, first off, you can't filter the water you, if you're pouring water over a melted reactor core, because that's the water we're talking about. You, you know, well, at just bed alone was 2.2 sieverts per hour. And these are lethal doses by the liter. Just walking past a couple of liters, this is a lethal dose. And if you put that in the filter, you can never change the filter. If you fill up a tank with it, that's 1.4 million sieverts of just beta. What about alphas? What about neutrons? What about you know, what about all the other emissions? How can you pretend that doesn't exist and that it doesn't matter? How can you do that? It's like going to a hospital and you got a bad heart. And the doctor says, we're going to take the heart out. And you're saying, well, what are you going to do, get another heart? No, no, you'll be okay. We're doctors. You'll be fine. Well, if you die, you can sue us. Back to Fukushima, surfers return to the beaches 12 years later. Why would you go back to a nuclear wasteland 20 kilometers from ongoing multiple reactors that have melted down? How can you be that stupid? 
How, how do we get that stupid? How does that actually work? How? How? <laughs> how do we get this stupid? No, I'm I'm in me. I watched lots of Spider Man and the Hulk, Dana. I'll be fine. He said the priority of tourism is to attract people, but I don't want to hide or cover the truth. Well, why? What are you doing there? Why are you so freaking stupid? How do you tie your boots on your own in the morning? Climate alarmists, a new form of colonialism that infringes on sovereignty researchers, which are pro-nuclear, holds a master's degree in environmental science, and says Fukushima meltdown had no adverse side effects whatsoever. Really? Covered the whole planet in radioactive fallout and has no adverse side effects. And that's what I mean. They're with the uh, Heritage Institute, I think it is. Yeah, the Heritage Foundation. They're the military industrial complex. They, they have meddled in your Americans' politics for decades. It's a think tank in Washington, D.C., They created a version of the Brooking Institute, which is, both of these should be illegal. They are under the Constitution of America. But when you gave, when you changed the Constitution to give corporations human rights, they piggyback in on it. Uh, under the original Constitution of the United States, it's uh, lobbying is illegal. Coors was the primary funder of the Heritage Foundation in the early years. In January 81, they published a mandate for leadership, a report aimed at reducing the size of the federal government, providing public policy guidance to incoming Reagan administration, including more than 2,000 Pacific suggestions. 60% of those 2,000 proposals were implemented or initiated. Doesn't mean that it followed through with it, but they were initiated. They were a leading proponent of Operation Desert Storm against Iraq, because all the money goes to the military, right? They supported the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. So real life scum. The real the real meddlers of your society is what we're talking about. The the real degenerates of society gravitate to these kinds of jobs. The, the real losers of humanity. In 2012, Senator Jim DeMint resigned from the Senate to head the Heritage Foundation because they're embedded. In uh, 2014, the Heritage Foundation began building a database of approximately 3,000 conservatives who they trusted to serve in a hypothetical Republican administration for the upcoming elections. Who they trusted. These are lobbying. This is lobbyist groups we're talking about. According to individuals involved in crafting the database, several hundred people from the Heritage database ultimately received jobs in the government agencies. So they span multiple administrations. That should terrify you that organized organizations like this actually exist has been considered one of the world's most influential think tanks. No, this is sedition what they're up to. The Heritage Foundation rejects the scientific consensus on climate change. Yeah, because nuclear, they say, did no harm. But this is radioactive followed after 19 days from the Norwegian Institute of Air Research, pulsing energy right around the entire planet every second for millions of years. And they, they reject anything that suggests that that is real. U.S. maternal death rates rise sharply in 2021. And the rates among black women is more than twice as high as those of white women, folks. Disgusting. 
Genesis öyle. Don't ask me because I don't know. Oh, uh, they put out a talk show of Fukushima and they just sang for two hours almost the song and dance of uh, TEPCO. For two hours straight, they just regurgitated TEPCO's narrative and it was it was disgusting. I sent them an email and said, you can get me on the show if you like. I'll get you up to speed real fast. I've been at this a long time. So tomorrow night, we're going to cover the die-offs. we got another show ready to go, sadly. And we've done research the weekend. Unfortunately, we had the first major dolphin die-off in history here on the East Coast. And... Uh, we went and documented that. We're going to cover that tomorrow night. That's the first confirmed die-off in history on the east coast of Canada of dolphins. They died of starvation because of Fukushima has broken the food chain. So we're going to be covering that tomorrow night. I'm still burnt out from everything. We got those pictures of the eagle and the seal on Friday, dead dolphins on Saturday, just a normal weekend on this planet now because of Fukushima's Fukushima endless radioactive fallout. We have, it's, it's our watch, this is our, this is our obligation, we're obligated to stand tall and fight back and educate the population, which is the best way I thought was go after the policymakers and the investors with educational programs. So I've been doing this, it feels like forever. And we cover the local 24 hour news cycle a lot uh, in order to bring hopefully more people into the show. But I'm, because I'm a considered a threat to national security, I've been arrested so much and given gag orders and everything else. Um, I don't expect to get a big group of people watching the show, but I'm hoping to inspire people that will. And also to target the investors and policymakers with a big fat dose of reality. Because this is not a game. This is life or death. We're talking about the future of humanity, the future of species, are on our watch. This is our obligation. This is not the next generation. We we got no hope in waiting. So we're doing I'm doing everything I can. I'm dedicated to this three hundred and sixty five days a year. I sleep, eat and breathe this. This is what I do and I do the research too. And we got six years of research expeditions to Alaska from Vancouver, British Columbia, clearly showing this is an extinction event. Now we're seeing the same thing on the east coast of Canada. I lost most of the support along the way because it's a difficult journey to be honest all the time. And all I can do is continue to educate the population and do a little bit of research that I can manage. And... Uh, we have no options but to fight back. There, there is no option. We're going to have one last look at the poll. We've got a perfect poll tonight. 100% are monsters who grow food close to the evil, despicable, disgusting, genocidal nuclear power plants. Or the Fukushima prefecture, like the prefecture I showed you earlier, committing a genocide. And that is exactly what is happening. This is unequivocally, unassailably a genocide. And we'll end that poll. Uh, 
There we go. Good night, Paul. Have a nice night. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. Thank you, Dana and Asana, for moderating. Hope everything went good. There we go. Looks like we made it. Everything looks good. See you tomorrow night, hopefully. We got a marine and animal insect stories to cover tomorrow night. We'll be showing pictures from yesterday and videos. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night and a great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody soon enough. Take care. If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Have a great night, folks. Take care.